Knock Beach here from Applied Ballistics and I'm going to do a quick five minute video on managing muzzle velocity variation. Uh, this goes along with the powder temperature stability two part series. This part is an actual demonstration of how to make these changes or do these things in the apps, the devices, the software, etc. There's two methods. One method is the muzzle velocity variation foot per second per degrees which is found in the AB mobile app. The other method is the temperature table, which is commonly found in AB Analytics, um, a lot of the devices like the Kestrel Elite, the Raptor S. So first we'll go over how to do it in the standard mobile app. Now what you have to do is you have to get to the ammunition screen. Uh, you can do this when you're building the new uh, bullet or you can go back and edit a bullet. And we're using the examples from the two part series. So when you're inputting this information into the mobile app, the first thing you want to do is input your actual muzzle velocity. And in our example, it was uh, 3,010 feet per second. Now you want to enter the temperature that it was whenever you uh, calculated that muzzle velocity. And in our example, it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The muzzle velocity variation that we calculated was 1.28 foot per second per degree. The muzzle velocity variation should be between 0.3 and 3.0 feet per second per degree. So once we've input that information, we simply save the profile and now it will automatically adjust our muzzle velocity based on the temperature that's input into the firing solution. There are other ways to do it. The other way is going to be to use a muzzle velocity temperature table. This is a fairly straightforward method. Um, to use a temperature table, you simply input the temperature and the calculated velocity. So um, you would input 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 3,000 feet per second. You would input, let's say you did it at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and it was 2980 feet per second. Uh, let's say that I did it again and it was at 40 degrees Fahrenheit and it was 2940 feet per second. So you simply input the temperature and then the velocity that you calculated at the time. It's that easy to use. Now with the Kestrel device itself, um, things can get a little bit tricky so we'll go over that here real fast. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to my gun and you can see here that I can freely uh, edit my muzzle velocity or I can do a calibration if I would like to. But if I happen to have a temperature table on or input, you'll see it muzzle velocity is no longer highlighted and I can no longer edit that muzzle velocity. Well, there's two ways to go about actually inputting the velocity I want to use at the time. The first method is simply turn the table off and now I can freely edit it again. Once I turn the table back on, I'm going to lose that velocity. So the other method that I can do is I can just simply add a new entry. Uh, I would add the entry, um, the temperature and the velocity that I calculated, and it would place an entry in the correct position on the table. Now, if I wanted to do a calibration, if I have the table on and I do a muzzle velocity calibration, uh, it won't change the number because it's being calibrated by the temperature table. So what I would then need to do is I would need to go ahead and do my calibration. You'll see I have 2997 just to show you, you can do a calibration with the table and I remember that number. And then I go back and I get my temperature, in this case 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And I would input those two numbers in as a new entry on the table. Now if we do a new entry it doesn't really matter. We'll go here and we'll we'll just pick something 90 degrees which isn't on the table yet and I'll change the velocity a little bit. You'll see that it inputs it in the correct place. These are the ways that you can manage your muzzle velocity shift with temperature shift. 